evening, everyone, and welcome. We have a special guest with us today. Or not, uh, he's special and he's a guest, but he's been here for a while and been around a few times. Father Peter's with us from the Francis Center, so we're very grateful he's going to break open the word for us and preach. And uh, today's Mass is being offered for, it's a multi-intentional Mass offered for Donna Crooks, John Edwin Crook, uh, John, Frank, and Christina Ohalak, requested by the family. And we begin our prayers this evening on this winter evening, and I, I'm sorry the weather has come back, but it is winter, it is February, so we have to kind of be grateful for even the cold. As we begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. And we ask for the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit to be with you all. We take a moment, a moment to call to mind how much in need we are of the gift of God's mercy in our lives. on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. We pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
a reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord spoke to Moses, speak to all the congregation of the children of Israel and say to them, you shall be holy for I, the Lord, your God, am holy. You shall not hate in your heart anyone of your kin. You shall reprove your neighbor you, or you will incur guilt yourself. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is holy and you are that temple. Do not deceive yourselves. If you think that you are wise in this age, you should become fools so that you may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. So let no one boast about human beings for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cyphus or the world of life or death or the present or the future. All belong to you and you belong to Christ and Christ belongs to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard it's, that it was said, An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evildoer. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him, go with them also the second mile. Give to everyone who begs from you, and do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The first reading from the book of Leviticus tells us not to take vengeance or bear grudges, but to be loving. We have a, an outstanding example of that in um, the life of a saint from Spain, St. Thomas of Villanova. He had someone in his charge, a religious probably Augustinian as he was, who would not accept the correction that he was given by St. Thomas of Villanova. He must have been doing something wrong. So St. Thomas of Villanova punished himself for the um, misdeed of this religious by scourging himself till he bled. And the guilty religious was so moved that he changed for the better. As for the first reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, Pope Leo XIII, commenting on St. Paul's words that we are God's temple, said this, By means of grace, God dwells in the just person, as in a temple, in a special and intimate manner, manner in a way, according to St. Thomas Aquinas, beyond our human understanding and in the words of Pope Pius XII that a way that is unique and supernatural in the deepest sanctuary of the soul God is the center of the soul as Cardinal Bona once said and no wonder Christ said the kingdom of heaven is within us that means we can seek to have an intimate interior relationship with God we are made in the image and likeness of God with memory, intellect, will, and we, for that reason, we can be closer to God than the sun is, or the stars, or diamonds, or gold, because the sun, the stars, diamonds, gold, they have not been made in God's image and likeness. They don't have a memory, intellect, will, as God does, and we do, as, as St. Thomas of Villanova explains. St. John of the Cross said, God himself is mine and for me, for Christ is mine and for me. What then do you ask for and seek? God himself is mine. The heavens, the earth, the mother of God, all things are yours, St. Paul tells us in today's second reading. It's like what the father said to the prodigal son when he came back, repentant. All is yours. As St. John as St. Jose Maria Escriva describes it, there is an ascending movement due to the Holy Spirit in us, a movement from this world upwards to the glory of God. And just to get a sense of this difference, we, we, we've lost the 
idea of inanimate objects, objects that have no anima, which in Latin means soul. But we have a soul. And um, St. Augustine uh, illustrates this wonderfully. He says, um, we have senses that can see and hear and touch, but there are things that we can't see and hear and touch, but they're very important, like peace, wisdom, justice. We can't buy bottles of peace. We can't buy uh, boxes of, of patience when we run out of patience. They're, they're very invisible, but that doesn't mean they don't exist. They are very important in the world. And if we could get something that would give us peace from some exotic plant, and manufactured and distributed, that, that, that could mean like the end of all wars, but it's not a physical reality, it's a very spiritual reality. And um, St. Augustine understood that, and that where we get these important realities is in virtue from God. Uh, God says in the Old Testament, I think thoughts of peace. But the further we get away from God, the more we lose contact with this source of important realities like peace and, and justice and wisdom. And so, as I just said, there is an ascending movement due to the Holy Spirit in us. A movement from this world upwards to the glory of God. And that, unfortunately, is the problem with, with the fall. The fall of Adam and Eve and the rest of us. We, we fall away from God, we get caught up with material things. Material things are okay, but if we lose the right order, that means trouble. If we lose sight of God, God, as our inheritance, we end up being stingy, unkind. And that is why the Lord tells us to banish from our hearts outlooks like an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Christ quotes from a passage from the Old Testament book of Leviticus, you shall love your neighbor. And that's important because some rabbis were saying one should hate one's enemy. That was because the rabbis came to interpret neighbor as only one's fellow Jew and the word enemy as a foreigner. Jesus corrects this misunderstanding because everyone is our neighbor. And in a few days, Ash Wednesday comes around, Lent begins, it's a time of repentance. And sometimes we might look on repentance as a negative thing, what they, call, they used to call a guilt trip, as only uh, being negative about oneself. But there is a, a wonderful insight from a monk, Blessed Dennis, who explains that um, it's not just about contrition, Contrition is a step to something else. Contrition comes from a word to crush. But he explains it in a wonderful way. It's like a lump of sugar, hard sugar. Uh, you crush it to make it powder, not just to, to see a pile of powder in front of you, but to make it dissolve in the coffee you're going to put it in or some other liquid. And that's what St. Paul meant when he meant when he said something about being dissolved in Christ. So the crushing of our spirits is not an end unto itself in Lent. It's so that we can be dissolved in Christ, we can attain, attain to unity with Christ and sympathy with Christ. And so it's a, it's a very, um, it's a very uh, wonderful thing, the season of Lent. It gives us a time to look into ourselves and it's not like um, you find that you're a criminal and you confess and the police arrest you and you end up in jail. No, it's, it's something uh, liberating. You, you, you crush yourself, you see, you see what's wrong with you and you entrust yourself to Christ and his mercy and then you get, to, you get absolved from your sins and you get dissolved in Christ's mercy and justice. So it's, it's, a, it's a very... Um, uh, it's a wonderful thing, Patricia. And um, as we come close to Lent, um
Yeah, it, 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 it's a serious time. We think of our sins, we think of what Christ went through for us, starting with that, that time in the desert. And um, we know that he went to bat for us. He, he went to, um, to great pains for us. It's like when I, was, when I was at the retreat center, we had some kids in once. And um, one of the boys, probably grade seven, said, uh, what's all this uh, negative stuff about sin and, uh, you know, be feeling bad about ourselves? And I said, well, you know, look, look, at, look at hockey. I said, there was a, there's a goalie once who, who explained things in, in, from his own perspective as, as, as an athlete. He said, you know, if I do something bad as a, as a goalie, if I trip someone in front of me, I'm going to get a penalty. But someone goes to serve that penalty for me. He comes off the bench. He didn't do anything wrong. But he, he, he comes off the bench and he goes to the penalty box for that, that two minutes. And that, he said, is what Christ did for us. We, we, we did the wrongdoing, but he takes the penalty for us. He comes off, actually he comes down from heaven and he pays for the, the, the wrong things, the bad things we do. And, you know, uh, it, it's a heroic, wonderful thing that he does for us. It, it's, not a, it's not about negativity. It's about uh, someone being concerned enough for us to take our wrongdoings upon himself, to take our misdeeds on himself, and pay for them generously. And he got it. He, he understood because sometimes uh, we th we do things maybe that seem uh, said in isolation about the wrongdoing of sin, but we have what uh, Hopkins called our champion. Our champion. Hopkins was a great uh, Jesuit poet. Our champion in life is Christ. He's the guy who takes the rap, he takes the penalty for us to, to free us. Because if, if the goalie had to go to the, to the penalty box and left the, the net open, they could score dozens of goals in two minutes, the, uh, the uh, opponents. So let's keep this in mind as, as we approach Lent and uh, fight the good fight. Amen. Let us profess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there we will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We now bring our intercessions before the Lord, and God loves all his children, deserving and undeserving. So let us pray that we may imitate the all-embracing love of God. For Canada, and other countries where people come from diverse religion and ethical ethnic backgrounds, that peace and harmony will prevail, we pray to the Lord. For healing of relationships that are strained and have gone sour, we pray to the Lord. For those who have hurt us in any way and whom we find hard to love, we pray to the Lord. For those who have no one to pray for them, we pray to the Lord. For all of our sick relatives and friends, and those whose names are listed in our bulletin sick list, we pray to the Lord. For all our loved ones who have died, those who died this past week, and those who rest in our cemeteries, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear 
for our own special needs. We pray to the Lord. And as we pray for peace in our world, we ask Our Lady to intercede, the Queen of Peace, especially in Ukraine and all the war-torn parts of our world, as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Merciful God, fill our hearts with your love. Give us the grace to rise above our human weakness and keep us faithful in loving you and one another. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Lift up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for through his pastoral mystery 
he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so, with the angels and archangels, the thrones and dominions, with the hosts of powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as, without end, we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis and Pope and Thomas our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit you full heirs to eternal life. And we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Offer each other some sign of that peace. Peace and brother. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
Just a couple of brief announcements. Just a reminder, as Father Peter mentioned in the homily, that uh, Ash Wednesday is this Wednesday coming, and we're having uh, masses in the grade school and the high school, and here at 7 p.m. So please join us for that. Also, uh, the uh, stations of the cross are going to be on Fridays during um, uh, Lent. So the first one will be on the 24th, which will be next Friday. Also, the um, there's a bundle sunday coming and that's for saint vincent de paul bin so the bin will be here on the weeks of march 3rd and 4th and 11th and 12th but it'll be here all through the week i think uh, at the church if you want to come and drop off something for the saint vincent de paul also um the edge program there's an edge going on this weekend and it's for young people who are in grades five six seven eight and it's from one to three sunday afternoon and of course, Sylvia and, um, and uh, of course, Maya and Anthony, who sung so wonderfully up there today, uh, they run that program, so it's wonderful. So we keep that in mind. And uh, I'd like to thank Peter for being with us, Father Peter, for helping us, because um, I never knew what happened when a goalie got a penalty. I, I didn't even realize goalies got penalties. I didn't think you could give a goalie a penalty. <laughs> so there you go. Lots of things. You learn something new all the time. 
So I uh, thank him for being with us and uh, thank you all for being here. Have a wonderful, glorious and blessed week. Let us stand and pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in the peace and love of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. And have a blessed week.